Hello and welcome to another episode of Retro Gaming with Ricardo. This week's game, 1943. Now this game is set in the Pacific Theatre of World War II, off the coast of the Midway Atoll. The goal is to attack the Japanese air fleet that bombed the American aircraft carrier, pursue all Japanese air and sea forces, fly through the 16 stages of play, and make their way to the Japanese battleship Yamato and destroyer. Eleven of these stages consist of an air-to-sea battle, with huge battleship or aircraft carriers as the stage boss, while five stages consist of an all-aerial battle against a squadron of Japanese bombers with a mother bomber at the end. As in a predecessor game, 1942, players pilot a P-38 Lightning. Controls are even similar. Button 1 fires the main weapons and Button 2 performs special options. For example, a maneuver like a loop or, in this case, a smart bomb. In this Atari ST version, players start with three lives and a damage meter. You can refill this damage meter by collecting various power-ups, chiefly the POW icons. In two-player mode, when both players overlap their planes on screen, the energy bar can be transferred from the player to the player with the more fuel or power. Destroying a complete formation of red enemy planes will result in a power-up, such as a health boost or a main new weapon. There are cheat codes, different for each stage, ranging from holding down the fire button or pointing the joystick in a certain direction, players are awarded with fully upgraded weapons. As for ports, Capcom released their own port for, this, for the NES, but the game also had been ported to the Atari ST, which you can see here, the ZX Spectrum, the Amstrad CPC, the Commodore 64 and the Amiga. In 1998, it was released as Capcom Generation 1 for the Sega Saturn and the PlayStation. In 2005, it was released for Xbox and PlayStation 2 as part of the Capcom Classics Collection, and again in Capcom Classics Collection Reloaded on the PlayStation Portable. It also included the initial game in the Capcom Arcade Cabinet, a compilation of games released digitally for the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. The overall faithfulness and quality of execution of these third-party versions varies greatly. On the Super Nintendo, released exactly one year after the arcade version, the NES version of 1943 introduced the ability to improve players' playing by permanently upgrading certain aspects of its abilities. I found this a very enjoyable but testing game at times. Sometimes the screen will get filled with multiple sprites and there's virtually no slowdown, which is fantastic for a game computer of the area, say 1998 for the Atari ST, which is the game we're playing here. However, some of the games you would find today on some of the consoles or some of the other computers would suffer some slowdown if all this stuff was going on. But this is great. It's a true to the arcade conversion which also means it's also very hard. This is offset, of course, by the fact you have multiple lives and you have a fuel or damage bar. As I mentioned, you can restore the fuel or damage bar by going over the POW. And there you have a POW icon. So in closing, an absolute fantastic game. I really enjoyed it and I think I'd be one of these games I'll be playing again and again and again. It's a good blast shoot 'em up. Vertical strolling game that is indicative and quintessential I think of the era. Anyway, I'll leave you the remainder of this gameplay. I've been Ricardo and thank you very much for watching this episode of Retro Gaming with Ricardo. This has been 1943. Thanks very much. We'll see you soon.